Good morning to you. Our WIT Appalachian Wireless Game of the Week was in Whitesburg last night, and it featured two teams on two totally different paths. The Harlan County Black Bears were riding a four-game losing streak, while the Letcher Central Cougars were riding a three-game winning streak. Letcher Central, welcome in to Harlan County Black Bears. Now, Harlan County was starting the season one and five last year as well. Late first quarter, we got Nick Surgent. You know, one of the better quarterbacks in the mountains, but he is picked off by Jacob Branson, the quarterback for Harlan County. He takes it inside the 10 yard line before being shoved out of bounds. First play after the turnover, Branson gives it to Quentin Mickens and right up the gut gets it to go. 10 yards out, 6 nothing. Black Bears. You Pike top play contender here in suing Cougar Drive. Surgeon says, hey, I'm still one of the best quarterbacks in the mountains, and I've got one of the best wide receivers in the mountains. Finds Tanner Lucas. He down. Look at him go. 63 yards on the play. And just like that, Letcher Central ties the game at six. How about another U Pike top play contender? Another 63 yard play here. It's Branson to the human highlight reel himself. Ty Reese Simmons. 12 6. They led at that point. The Black Bears did. And Harlan County beats. The Letcher Central Cougars 26 to 6. That moves them to 7 2 all time versus Letcher Central. Again, 26 to 6 last night in our Appalachian Wireless Game of the Week. Let's go over to Not Central. The Patriot Cheerleaders always doing their thang. Not sure what that means, but it's what the cool kids say, maybe. Justin Combs, he saw me, he said, Hey, hey, Jamie, how's it going? How's it going, coach? McGoffin County at Not. Not led 22 to 20 at the half. Good third quarter. Dylan Williams. Takes the snap, goes right up the gut, in for six for McGoffin County. Chest bumps all around. You pike top plate contender because they go for two, and this thing is a beauty. Williams rolling. Brady Whitaker, go get it. I got it. I got both feet in, too. That would have counted in the NFL. It's 28 to 22. McGoffin gets the lead. Ensuing possession. Next play, Luke Jacobs. Get off me. How about the juke here? Uh, just breaking ankles. 57 yarders. I. I told Cameron Jones, quarterback for not such hey, throw me a touchdown. I didn't need that because well, I, had, I had Luke Jacobs. And I had this, another U Pike top play contender. Oh, my goodness. Bad snap. Ty Holland wants to scoop it and score. Nope, but there's Jake Brown. He's scooping and scoring. I love the stiff arm, too. You know, last week we had him as a U Pike top play, won the U Pike top play contenders taking a squib kick back. This time he takes a fumble back. My goodness, got to love it. Let's go to the scoreboard. Not Central wins last night, 48 to 36. They bounce back from a loss to Breathitt County. All right, let's do Phelps and Jenkins now. Jenkins Cavaliers hosting the Phelps Hornets down in Letcher County. The Cavs go three and out of their first possession. Hornets make them pay with a rushing touchdown around the left side. Tyson White, 10 plus yards, six nothing Phelps. Yeah, give me some love. We doing good. Trying to win our second game of the year. Next point of possession, the handoff is fumbled. Josh Dubb jumps on it for Jenkins. Cavs take over near midfield. But the Hornets take it right back. Austin Fields. Oh, he's picked off. Seth Elkton. Phelps takes over in Cav territory and they capitalize. How about a U Pike top plate contender on a fourth and 12? Of course, you're going to go for it. Preston Stump. On the receiving end, just hurtling everybody and scoring. It's 12 to 0 at that point after a block punt. Phelps busted in again. Brandon Turnmere, a two yard plunge there. Head coach David Jones and the Hornets win their second game of the season, 40 to 8, the final over the Jenkins Cavaliers. Well, last night in Eastern, the Allen Central fans turned Don Daniels Athletic Complex into a small zoo, and they had every right to be wild. The Rebels off to a Best start in school history, 5-0, with a chance to start 2-0 in the district with the win over Leslie County. Let's go out to Eastern, where, well, yes, there I am, cheerleading with Josh McKinney, sports director's sister. There's Molly. There she is. Going crazy, holding up the sign. Got to love it there. Eddie Melton's Leslie County Eagles trying to give their Rebs their first loss of the season. I stink at cheerleading, by the way. First quarter, Allen Central punting, and well, whoops, there goes the snap. It's 2 nothing after the safety. But that's okay. Next time Allen Central gets the ball back, quarterback Dylan Cottle, he keeps it. And, and, oh my goodness, he gone. Bye-bye. 90 yards to the house. 8-2 to two, Allen Central after the two-point conversion. Second quarter, Eagles march back down the field. Derek Whitaker punches it in from a yard out. Got an 8-8 game, and then later, Whitaker goes to the air 
I thought Jesse Brown had the interception, and well, he didn't have the interception. Tyler Dixon has the reception, and Leslie County Eagles, they score again before the break. It was 14 to 8 at halftime recess. Allen Central loses for the first time this season. You saw the only touchdown. Dylan Cottle there scored the eight points. It was 26 to 8. Leslie County wins. North were hosting Whitley County for some district play last night. You pike top play contender to start things out. Early first quarter. Jaguar ball and Nick Broughton. Get off me, bruh. He gone 47 yards, just jogging right in. Eight nothing north after the two point conversion. Colonel's turn now. They'll drive one in here and punch it in. Eight to seven now, midway through the first quarter. A couple possessions later, Jags ball and Jose Rodriguez. Not gone, but he goes for 66 yards. A few plays later, QB keeper Cole McWhorter. He leads it in there, 15 to seven North Laurel, but Whitley comes back, takes it 23 to 22. Top ranked Belfry hosting Cabell Midland out of Huntington. The class of 1976 was there for their 40th reunion. What a crowd at the cam last night, as always in the first Noah Corbett. You know, you don't want to play these guys coming off a loss because they're coming off a loss against Knoxville Catholic. Not a bad loss, but it does. And Corbett keeps it later in the drive with the TD there in the second. Jake Guram hands it. And it's Yvonne Vaughn. Get off me. I'm going in. Pirates up 14 to 7, though, as the Knights get on the board. Staying in the second. Corbett gets it to Tavion Hunter. Takes it. Look at, look at Tavion Hunter. Got the wheels juking. Still going. Finally brought down as he trips up. Belfry near the end zone. Now Corbett keeps the ball. Breaks the tackle to add six to the board. And the Pirates bounce back from last week's loss at Knoxville Catholic. 35-21 over Cabell Midland. Henry Clay hosting Pulaski County. The Maroons, they're on a roll. Let's see what they would do last night. Jalen Conwell, good to see this kid healthy. Always been banged up in the last two years, but he's in for a hard run for six there. And then the Blue Devils, Montavian Bean, running for his life. Ah, ah, help, I got it. Zach Brinowitz in the end zone there for the touchdown. PC answers, Matt Hendricks. Got to go to the main man, right? Jake, not from State Farm. Nope, Jake, Mr. Football Candidate himself. Little jukage there. Touchdown, Jake Johnson from Pulaski County. Skip to Malou, a big road win for the Maroons. 40-21, the final at Henry Clay. Knox Central hosting the Bulldogs. I should say, Pikeville hosting the Bulldogs of Hazard. Potential District Championship on the line. In the third, Bulldogs, Bailey Blair. Throws it up, and Braxton Whitaker catches the pass. Good stuff there, but later in the drive, Blair, you know, he's been good all season. He's looking, and oh, nobody's going to catch him here. So everything's good. Another good pickup. Then a U-Pike top play consider this is not good for the Bulldogs. Blair drops the ball, then throws, tipped. Whoops. It's into the other quarterback's hands. Wide battle who was playing defense there. Great interception there. Pikeville makes it five straight over Hazard. 29-21 the final. The Panthers in the driver's seat for the district title. Now we go to Knox Central. And we go to Clay County, who was taking on Knox Central. Breast Cancer Awareness Month with a pink ribbon there on the field. Right before halftime, 14-0 Panthers. Knox Central ball. They go for the air, but they find a Tiger uniform. Chance Smith with the pick. Nothing comes out of that drive, though. So we go third quarter. The Panthers drive down the field, punch it in. 21 to nothing. That's one TD. How about another? Donovan Arthur. Our Carly Bell was shooting this game, and our Carly Bell almost got ran over in this game. Donovan Arthur. I forget how many yards. Something like 65 yards, maybe? It was 28 to nothing. Knox Central. And oh, here's the third Panther touchdown. This one is Tanner Wells. Yeah, see ya. 54 yards all the way to the end zone. 35 nothing Panthers and Knox Central were going to shut out Clay County. 41 to nothing. All right, let's finish it up to Mount Vernon. It's Wayne County and Rockcastle County. Winner gets a leg up in the district. Second quarter, Lorenz and Lindsay throws a dart to Aubrey Weaver. That's a gain of 19. And then Lindsay takes it over from a couple yards out. 21 to 14 Cardinals at the half. Let's go third quarter. Rockcastle's holding Barnett. Look at the big guy here. 
just tries to plunge over there and gets the score. Game tied at 21 at that point. This game would go to overtime. They needed to play some extra football. And number six, Rockcastle County, still with just one loss on the season because they defeat Wayne County 41 to 34. How about the Rockcastle County Rockets in Class 4A doing really well this season, along with the Johnson Citral Golden Eagles. That's first look, or that is a look at sports this morning. Enjoy your morning.